Hello, this is Keith Stewart, the games editor of The Guardian, and I am joined today for this little playthrough of PlayStation 4 launch games by Keza McDonald. Hello, Keza. Hello. And can you explain what you do at IGN, which is where we are at the moment. Indeed. I, IGN not. are hosting us in their lovely Swish new offices. I am UK games editor at IGN, IGN. so I'm very excited, obviously, for the PlayStation 4 to be coming out in our territory. Yes. This uh, week, this yes. Friday, when this yes. goes live. I presume this is going live on Friday, right? Uh, yes. Yes. So let's have a look at Rezo Gun, which is going to be available for free to people that sign up for the PlayStation Network. That's right, isn't it? For the PlayStation right. Plus. For PlayStation Plus. It's also actually the top rated launch game on either the Xbox One or the PS4 right now. Which is ironic in the maximum, considering it's a reasonably retro themed shooter, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's, it's like Superstar. Also, it has speaking out of the um, controller. Which I really <laughs> you love. Can hear. Yeah. You can probably hear that. Um, I really, I really, really enjoy uh, Super Stardust HD, which was the same developer, Housemark, and that was a PlayStation 3 launch. And they were a European developer, aren't they? They're yes. from, and I think, I, I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they come from the sort of demo scene or hardcore shooter scene. Um, they did back in the day. Yeah, and they're massive fans of traditional 2D shooters. So as you can see, this is very much a traditional shooter, but with an amazing HD sheen and lots of particle effects. And you can go both ways. You can go both ways. The, the, main, the main trick in Resogun is to learn how to, how to do boosting. I've been saving it. Okay. But, um, oh, Keeper's Detected. Keeper's Detected, this is important. Mm, that's boosting. Oh, oh yeah. So that you can navigate, navigate around the level properly. Let's get these dudes. All right. So basically you have to shoot everything and save the humans. Oh, good. That's good. I like stories like that. Yeah, it's got a um, a very dystopian, as it were, backstory where basically <laughs> all the humans are dead. <laughs> okay. That's it. Nice one. But as you can see, it gets um, quite complicated quite quickly. It's quite visually overwhelming in a good way. So how does the multiply system work? Because that's a that's an uh, an important part of the. Of uh, yeah, you right. gotta you gotta hit things within a certain time limit, and then also you get a better multiplier to hit things while you're in overdrive. Ah, okay, so when you're in overdrive, you can kind of shunt things. That's right, yeah, you can also, um, so every level comes in three phases, and they're all, uh, oops, like this, so, one, two, let's get these guys. So, to me, it reminds me a little bit of, um, obviously, Defender and, um, the C64 version of that, Drop Zone, it has that, obviously, in both versions, you could go both ways, and it had a kind of similar look. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a very, very pretty. Um, example of just basic what the PS4 can do, in my opinion. Um, but in 2D. In 2D, yeah. Kind it's of. Just, it's a, I, you know, this is the only game that I've ever played where I thought I wish this was in 3D. Mm. In, in terms of you know stereoscopic 3D. Being oh, 3D. I see. Yeah, that would be quite incredible. Yeah, because um, Super Stardust looks amazing. Oh, darn. Super Stardust looks amazing. That was a pretty cool explosion. Yeah. Bomb gone. Here we go. Now it's time for the boss, and this is where they're really showing off them particle physics. <laughs> So pretty. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is kind of this generation's version of Wipeout, isn't it? In terms of its kind of fetishistic use of post apocalyptic visuals. Yes, and also the music. Yes. So the end of level baddie is an enormous tire. Yes, pretty much, pretty much, big tire. With a kind of super hexagon element as well in trying to navigate through doorways. Bullet hell style right now. Oh dear. So essentially, Housemark have taken loads of great ideas from lots of amazing shooters and put them into a really beautiful launch game. Yeah, it's 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 a great launch game. Um, it's exactly the kind of thing you want to play the second you get your PS4 home. Yeah. If you're me, you just want to play something really pretty and um, that, that just impresses you immediately on an aesthetic level. And I've just started to. Oh. Play. Never mind. 
So we've had a look at Rezo Gun, and now we're going to have a look at FIFA 14, which is going to be a big game, I think, on both the uh, next-gen consoles this Christmas. Indeed. Yes, yeah, so this is one of the current-gen big hitters that's also out on PS4 and Xbox One. And It does look a lot better, though, um, and not, not only does it look better, there have been significant improvements to the engine. So yes. it's, it's clever, right? It's got better AI. Yeah, it's got... Well, they, they claim that they've um, been able to use the extra capacity to improve the AI and improve the physics. But you can see there, obviously, there's massive improvements to the stadium as well. And real 3D spectators, I think, for the first wow. time. Wow, rather than those weird those ca cardboard cutout weird, type things. Yeah, yeah, those weird blurry cardboard cutouts. So anyway, I'm playing as Manchester City, uh, which is my team. And I've chosen... Um, we're playing at home at the city of Manchester Stadium. Now, it's, it's difficult with FIFA because FIFA, let's be honest, always looks like football. Yes. But does this represent a significant visual improvement, do you think? Well, I mean, it, it does actually look really, really nice. And the movement of the players feels a lot smoother as well. I completely messed that one up. But the um, what they've said about this game is that you have much better degree of movement, like it's not an eight degree of movement right, right. of the players now. So you have a real kind of 360 degree move and that's really showing up with players like Aguero who can really run with the ball, just try to chip the goalkeeper there, not um, <laughs> unsuccessfully. It was a valiant effort. Then, yeah, you're, you're, basically there's a lot more movement, a lot more fluidity to the movement this time around. And it's also much more physical as well. Mm. There's more physicality between the players. It's interesting as well. I think a lot of people who are buying next-gen consoles are not necessarily going to be buying them for the new games. They're going to be buying them to play the games that they already know, but better looking. Yeah. So, oh, um, big mistake I there by the keeper. <laughs> I think I'm hopefully going to be able to... Can I? Want to bring it home. Oh, 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 I wanted you to go for that. I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there are people who will be buying the PS4 just for FIFA or for COD. Yeah. yeah. Which, you know, they're out in the current-gen consoles, but you want the better looking version. It looks like it's running at 60 FPS as well. And you can see, obviously, the crowds are really quite detailed there. Yeah. Lots of different people, lot, lots of people doing different things. As opposed to just sitting as or doing yeah. that, that one weird wave. <laughs> yeah. That they all have done since FIFA 95. He's done that same thing again. So content-wise, FIFA 14 on PS4 is much the same, right, as it is on current gen? Yeah, de yeah definitely. I mean, uh, um, we were talking about exclusivity a minute ago, and one thing that the Xbox, 3, uh, Xbox One version has got that um, the PS4 version doesn't is the Legends on the Ultimate Team mode, which adds uh, a whole bunch of legendary, 40 legendary. This is going to be amazing if I manage to pull it off. Oops. Oh, so nearly. <laughs> Never mind. I think I'm, I, I'm still. The problem is, I, I, I spent a lot of my early football simulation career playing PES uh, and the, uh, and the, <laughs> the shoot transition. buttons on it. PES really not a factor at the moment, is no. it, in the football game world? No, absolutely not, especially obviously not in the, not in the next generation. What a wonderful... Um, but you can... I mean, what we are trying to show you here isn't that I'm the worst uh, FIFA player in the world, <laughs> but just that the, uh, the animation apparently has ten, 10 times the animation depth of the uh, current-gen versions. It seems like every year they struggle to find a new thing to do with FIFA. Like it was all about defending last year, wasn't it? Yes. Um, well, I, I think this year it's about physicality and intelligence. So your AI teammates are much, are much more likely to be able to read what you're planning and what you're doing and get themselves into um, space. It does look quite disturbingly like real football at this point, doesn't it? Well, when I was at Gamescom and I was sort of hanging around at the EA stand and they had big screens showing this game, and there were moments, and I've said this, it's a bit like Forza in a way, there are moments of photorealism where you, you, you are sort of conned into thinking, yeah. not conned, Even, that's not the right word. Well, but, Deluded? Yeah, <laughs> deluded. You are deluded yeah. into thinking it's real life. It is, um, even the way that they, the players actually make contact, Yeah. it just looks a lot better and more natural. Well, exactly. And you, you saw there the player trip over. That is part of this sort of whole idea of increasing the physicality of the game. Um, I was going to try and get the ball back so I can show you the close dribbling. Whoops. Oh, that was good. No one was there to get that. Um, one of the big things is that they've... Um, they changed the dribbling, so you could, if you press the L1, you've got lots better. You've got really close control there. If you, if you hit F1, keep it pressed down. Sorry, L1, press down. And no one can get the ball off you, so that's quite nice. You can just fiddle around, be a bit messy-esque if you like. 
I'm seeing um, of the current titles that are right, the big Oops. titles of autumn, so Battlefield, COD, and FIFA. Yeah. I reckon FIFA's the biggest... On side. Yes. I reckon FIFA's the biggest draw on next gen because it's, it's got... I mean, it might not be an upgrade to the roster or an upgrade to the core gameplay, but it does have significant improvements rather yeah. than just being prettier, right? Exactly, yeah. They they do... What Dave Rutter, the producer, has said is they've added a significant layer of AI, of extra AI intelligence into the, into the game, so everything's going to be... A, smarter allegedly you know this is my first go on uh, on, the, on this version of the game and they do seem to be it does seem to be better more interesting movement from the players i'm just gonna but i'm just going to do, do my own thing so this is knack one of the launch exclusives for ps4 it is in fact mark kearney's game the chappy who actually built the ps4 the pretty system much. architect of yes. the playstation 4 yeah who who is a veteran game designer he was at um, he was at Sega and worked on Sonic 2, and then he moved, uh, he was at Sega for a long time, and then he moved on to, I think he was at Naughty Dog, wasn't he? Oh. He did Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, and Spyro as well. Yeah. So he's a veteran of the cutesy platformer, of which Knack is definitely one. Honestly, it's, this is, this is uh, not a particularly exciting exclusive for, for PS4. It's a real shame. What's the point of it? You are some kind of... You're this dude, Knack, and you collect bits and you get bigger. Right. <laughs> but it's, it's a very simplistic, kind of cutesy, cutesy platformer that um, doesn't really go anywhere, which is a bit sad. I mean, it's nice, and it's got nice ideas. And as you can see, it looks quite pretty. But I would rather have had a new Ratchet & Clank or a Jack & Daxter or something like that. Wh yeah. Which I think, wasn't Mark Cerny involved with? Uh... He was, and the new Ratchet & Clank on PS3 is actually considerably better yeah. <laughs> than, than Knack. Because it, to me, it really does resemble those PS2, it, not in terms of visuals, of course, because the visuals look lovely, but it re, you know, in gameplay-wise, this looks <coughs> very similar to, and this looks very similar to the early um, Crash Bandicoot, well, yeah. Crash Bandicoot, Jack it's and It's very Baxter. simple, I mean, basically it's, it's jump and uh, smash things and dodge around, that's basically it. It's really very, very easy to play. I mean, the one advantage that Knack has is that it's quite colourful. And nice for, you know, it's accessible. Yeah, I mean, this is... The story's quite sweet. Isn't it that goblins have invaded the Earth or something so. like that? Yeah. Goblins have invaded and only Knack, the um, metamorphosizing cyborg thing, can save <laughs> humanity. It's interesting, this reminds me of Cameo Elements of Power, the Xbox 360 launch game. Yeah, I remember that. Which was just also not very good. Uh, not terrible, just not particularly good. Why do we always have to default to caverns? It's always got to be caverns. It has he, no, no nice are there any, fields or anything. Are there any Go great sliding puzzles by any chance? <laughs> Quite possibly. I haven't played enough of Knack to know exactly how many great sliding puzzles it contains. I suppose it's got a few. Well, you've got pretty sliding rocks. Didn't have them on there. No, PS3. no. So, um, why do you think that this is one of the launch titles? Like, what do you think's behind? this as a launch title because I, I think that basically they couldn't say no to the guy who made the PS4. Do you think that's it? Do you think he said I want to make a game? I th I, did they draft him on to make the game first or did he was he making the system and he said oh I want to make I think, I think he was making the system way back in 2008. Even, yeah so. that's true but I think he did some of the design was in parallel wasn't it because he said it gave him an insight into, into how to, to ensure that the ar yeah. Yeah, ensure the architecture was, was friendly because um, Mark Mark Sony is obviously very much behind this idea of PlayStation 4 being developer-friendly hardware. This is some kind of like end of level. This is a little boss interlude, I believe. A little mini bot, a little mini boss thing. Actually, smash, oh. smash. Always just press the one button to smash things. Oh no! Actually, Are there the in a variety of special combinations? No. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Not that I've found yet. Um, oh, that was there you go. Dispatched. Bye, guys. Dispatch this now. So yeah, Knack, not particularly interesting, let's be honest. So this is Killzone Shadowfall, the latest uh, in the Killzone series of first-person shooters. So being a futuristic shooter, it's all about um, future weapons for me, Killzone. Yeah. They do have, I mean, all Killzone weapons always have this really nice feel to them. They always feel kind of chunky and... Oh! Robot. I'm just going to throw a grenade at him. There we go. This is a genuinely oh. good looking... Oh, on my side. This is a genuinely good looking launch game, Killzone. I think it's probably the best looking. It's got some amazing lighting effects. 
Multiplayer, have you played much of Killzone? Do you know how good it is? There. Ooh. Oh. No, I've not played that much at all. Well, it's difficult to play when, of course, there's no one online because the game hasn't been released. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is slight. Yeah. So this is some multiplayer. Obviously, we're offline right now because the game's not out yet. So this is bots we're using to test out exactly how radical Killzone looks in multiplayer, which I think we can safely say is pretty radical. It does look it does look beautiful. Um, and yeah, this is a this is sort of bot version, so you can sort of try out your multiplayer tactics without having to humiliate yourself in front of 12 year old Americans. Indeed, which is what I do. that is basically what multiplayer has become in the in the last generation <laughs> of consoles. <laughs> Ritual humiliation in front of American pubescence. And again, you can sort of see how beautiful the game looks. This is the park multiplayer map. Yeah, I mean it's it's gorgeous. I, I think this this um I think Killzone is the best uh, the best example of just straight up next gen shooter. Yeah. Looks. It does look good. That we've got um, look at that nice variety in this map as well. Yet to find any bots. Though, which is a bit of an issue. Maybe they're just hiding. They've heard your. They've heard, me. They've heard how they've good heard I am. Your yeah. They're frightened. Next gen ladders. Oh, hello. Aren't they your friends? No, they're not. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I don't laugh. Well, now you much. confused me in the middle Sorry. of my shooting. I was having such yeah, a nice time shooting. That was shooting. all my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Um, so, in, have you played much multiplayer? I haven't played much multiplayer. I've played a lot, obviously, on placed on uh, Killzone Three, and it's okay. It just has that sort of vanilla feel to it, in that it's a perfectly perfunctory, workmanlike interpretation of what first-person FPS experience. It's should weird. Be I've like. never actually felt like um, Killzone's managed to win the hearts of PlayStation gamers in the same way as many of the other iconic franchises. No, absolutely not, and it's. It's, it's obviously one of two Sony, uh, of two of Sony's attempts to, to uh, build their own massive FPS French franchise. The other one obviously being Resistance, Fall of Man, which was, I think, a much more interesting game. I think it was more successful. I mean, it had an interesting premise, Resistance. Didn't yeah. It? We're just admiring the outside right now in the absence of bots to shoot at. I think Killzone has always had this kind of steely... Oh, no. oh. Couldn't even see that. Never mind. <laughs> It's always had this kind of steely aloofness, I think, that some people find attractive. It feels almost documentary style at points, but really, yeah. In, in terms of like, because the weapons feel so feel so heavy, and there's a real kind of brutality to it. I don't know if you have, do you ever see Battlefield uh, Los Angeles? Was it Battlefield Los Angeles? The um, not very good science fiction alien invasion movie. I didn't actually know. Uh, well, that that had a kind of documentary, uh, war documentary feel to it, which I think Killzone has as well. That sense of gritty realism, even within a science fiction universe. Within the campaign, I think um, Killzone really shines. It's a nice blossomy tree. He's not, they're, not, they're not going down, are they? An assist there. No, I've got an assist. Look at that uh, beautiful light. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, it's very... Um, it's just, it's just very high resolution. Yeah. You know, it looks very different from, um, you know, how it, how um, the launch titles certainly on PS3 look, and the previous Kill Zones. It's actually more colourful than Kill Zones ever been before as well. Yeah, definitely. It's got a nice palette. <laughs> oh, no, mm, right behind me. Never mind. 